In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to use the linearization modeling function of the MICA toolbox. So what is linearization modeling and why might we want to do it? Well, almost all images you come across are non-linear. That means, for example, if we take a picture of a set of known reflectance standards, where we know, for example, that this is 99% reflectance, this is 80, 60, 40, and so on. If we photograph this and measure the pixel values, we find that they're actually non-linear with respect to reflectance. They actually fit something like a gamma variant in most cases. That means, for example, that if we look at the difference in reflectance between 80 and 100%, there's only a very small change in the pixel values between quite bright and very bright. But the same 20% reflectance difference at the bottom of the scale creates this enormous difference in pixel values. Uh, this distance is much larger than this distance. So we need to take away this non-linearity for various reasons during image processing when working with uh, reflectance images or when we want to measure color accurately or when we want to convert images into cone catch. So to linearize an image, we essentially need to be able to have a model where we can work out the inverse of this gamma variant, where we can take a pixel value and for each pixel value work out a corresponding uh, reflectance percentage. And that's exactly what the function in the Micro Toolbox can do. It can allow you to take a nonlinear image um, and linearize it. But to do that, we need to take a photograph of a set of known reflectance standards. So here I have taken pictures of an x right uh, color chart, color checker chart, um, just a small passport version. I photographed this outside on a, on a, a well-lit day, so that's roughly approximating D65 conditions. It's really important that when you take a photograph of your reflectance standards that the, unif the, the lighting is incredibly uniform. There should be no shadows anywhere nearby. There should be very flat lighting everywhere and you should ideally be standing as far away as you can while being able to take a nice picture of the image just so that your own shadow, your own body isn't interfering with the lighting nearby. If you don't uh, have equipment that can measure reflectance then the x right color checker charts are probably quite uniform. So I measured this one in my lab and found it's very similar in reflectance to um, the same uh, product bought five years earlier. But I can't guarantee that these will be the same numbers. So you need to take a picture. You should also take a picture under various um, uh, exposure settings. So here I've taken a picture which is well exposed, a picture which is slightly overexposed, and a picture which is slightly underexposed. You can do that automatically with exposure bracketing on your camera. Uh, this was just taken with a cheap smartphone, um, and the linearization modeling process should only be used where you don't have access to the raw images. So that's where you might have JPEG images, for example. Make sure you're using high quality JPEG images or if you're using stills from video frames, for example. Now you should install the Micro Toolbox into ImageJ, and once you've done that, you'll see that you get this multispectral imaging uh, options in your plugins, and then we go Camera Calibration and Model Linearization function. I've preloaded this script with the reflectance values I measured for the x right Color Checker Passport, so the brightest one here, for example, was 91.5, and then a comma, and then the second one, which is nearly 60% standard, etc., for all six. The color checker has just six gray levels, and that really is about the minimum. I, would, um, I wouldn't want to use any fewer than that. Um, ideally, you should be using eight or more, but six does seem to work uh, very well. The range is also important. Um, going up to 90% um, is good, and the darker also the better. So down to, in this case, about 3% reflectance, which is good. Then we just need to give our camera a name. So this was the Wiley Fox Spark X, a very cheap phone that I bought for about uh, 60 pounds, but which has a very good 13 megapixel camera. Now we want to select a photograph that is uh, as well exposed as possible. So we want the brightest possible photograph, but where no pixels have actually reached the saturation point, reached the top of the range. So let's go for that brightest image and see how that looks. 
Uh, here it is. It's showing an overlay where these colors show overexposed pixels. You can also look at the pixels levels by looking at the uh, image J um, status box here. And as I move my cursor across, you can see um, the green here is overexposed. And the green color here is also showing these pixels are overexposed. So we can't use this image to create a linearization model because the brightest standard here is overexposed. It would give us um, um, improper results for using. So I'll close this and press escape and we'll use a different image. So multispectral imaging, camera calibration, model linearization function, and then Wiley Fox Buck X in this case. And I'll select that the next uh, picture which is less overexposed. And here it looks like uh, the values are well exposed and they're not being highlighted as overexposed. So now I will just select a region over each of the standards. It's asking for the 91.5% uh, standard first, so I'll just draw a box over that. Make sure when you draw this box you select a region which isn't being interfered with by any of the edges or any dirt on the standard. Once you've selected it, press OK, and just go through all of the standards in turn as it asks you for each one. There we are. Now the script has already been through and compared our results to each of uh, these different linearization models and it's ranked them depending on fit. So here the straight line is the worst fit, not surprisingly, and as soon as you can start fitting curves to the model you get a better fit. The best fit here is in this case the JT linearization. This is an equation I devised which can perfectly fit the inverse of the gamma variate. So this, it actually makes sense that, for example, with pictures in sRGB color space and most other color spaces that use a gamma variant, this JT linearization model should work best. And with this box, we can choose to see the results of different linearization models. Uh, so here, if we look at just sRGB, uh, so you know the official uh, description of what sRGB should be doing, we find it's actually a very poor fit. So in this case, we can't use, we can't assume that our camera is conforming to the sRGB linearization curve. Likewise, the third degree polynomial was quite good. So let's have a look at those. So although this does seem to be a good fit, a polynomial will be very bad to use um, for any pixel values beyond the range of our um, pixel standards, uh, sorry, pixel levels. You see here the, the curve is starting to curve down, whereas in fact that's not what we'd expect. We'd expect this to curve um, out to zero here. So be very wary of using polynomial curves, best to avoid them. Uh, the JT linearization looks best, um, so let's have a look at that. And here we've got a near perfect fit across all of the channels, and extrapolating beyond the region that we've measured actually the angles uh, look quite good and it will be doing something sensible. So to select this JT linearization model we just need to tick this box and press OK and this will now have saved this linearization model into your version of the Micro Toolbox in ImageJ. So I'll just show you briefly how this can be used to create a linear image. If I go multispectral image, generate multispectral image I will create an image using these functions, and the important thing to select here is custom nonlinear. This will allow us to use the linearization model we've just used. I'll use that 91% standard as uh, from the color chart as the reflectance standard, and I'll just output a linear normalized stack. I'll select the same image I used to actually make the linearization model, just for demonstration. And in this box, we need to select the model that we've just made. So that was this Wiley Fox Spark X model. Now I just need to select the 91% standard. And this has created a linear normalized image. So in this image, the pixel values correspond to 
uh, the reflectance as measured relative to our original model of uh, the reflectance of these gray levels. And I can quickly demonstrate how to measure that to show that, that it's working. Um, if we just select a box and then I press M on my keyboard, it will measure the mean pixel values of all of uh, the, the region selected. And you can see here they're all 91, pretty much spot on. And then we can measure all of these pixel levels in the other gray standards. And we should find, if we look back at the original measured values, that these correspond very well to the original measured values of our reflectance uh, on the color chart.